Good evening. This is KC9UDX. My name is Matt and I welcome you to the 2 a.m. net. The purpose of this net is to promote the use of amplitude modulation and also to establish this part of this band as a place for AM activity in this area. Everyone is invited to listen. Licensed amateurs who can do so legally are encouraged to check in. We listen in the AM mode and transmit in the AM mode where possible. If you cannot transmit in AM, we encourage you to listen in AM and transmit in FM. If you are transmitting in FM, please adjust your transmit frequency a couple KCs above or below from our received frequency. This facilitates the use of slope detection, that is, demodulating your FM signal with our AM receivers. When checking in, please announce your call sign in standard phonetics. Again, this is KC9UDX. My name is Matt, and I will now begin accepting check-ins. Any stations wishing to check in, please come now. Hearing none so far, I hope my signal is getting out. This is KC9UDX calling the 2 a.m. net. Anybody wishing to check in, please call now. Whiskey Bravo 9, Bravo Whiskey Papa. All right, recognizing Dave, WB9BWP, do we have anybody else? Well, hearing none so far, it's just you and me at this point, Dave. Uh, I have an announcement for the net. Uh, I guess I'll probably have to repeat this later if others check in. My uh, start time at work has been moved up 15 minutes, so that's going to cut 15 minutes off the end of our net, which, which really kind of stinks because I think we had a good thing going at exactly an hour. It worked really well. And I don't know how long this is going to last, but I guess we'll have to bear with it uh, for now. I thought about moving the start time of the net up 15 minutes, and I think it's confusing enough for people that we do this one uh, time a month on the second Tuesday. And uh, I think a 15 minute uh, start time would, would probably be more confusing. And I thought, too, about moving it up maybe another half hour, and I, I just don't think that's real viable for me at this point. So, so we're kind of limited to 45 minutes uh, for the foreseeable future. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to you, Dave, WB9BWP from KC9UDX. One more while you're talking. Joe uh, Bratwurst, YouTuber, uh, has called on the phone. Stand by, Joe. We'll get to you in a minute here. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what they're trying to accomplish with the 15-minute change. It, it is kind of disruptive, I think. Uh, <laughs> it's, 
it's very hard. You know, it, as you were saying, it's hard for people to adapt for a net. You know, it's hard to adapt for that uh, for a start time when you're working too. Uh, years and years ago, I worked at a place where we had a five-minute uh, shift, and that was for political reasons. The uh, city of New Berlin sort of required that. It was actually to uh, find a loophole in, in one of their regulations, but uh, we started five minutes different, and this goes back before people carried phones with accurate time in their pocket and stuff. <coughs> so what the company did was set all the clocks five minutes different. And for years that I worked there, I had to have two clocks everywhere, one with work time and one with normal time. I always had, to this day, I have cars that I had when I worked there, and I have two clocks in the car. Anyway, I'm uh, probably talking too long here because we need to see if we have any further check-ins. If there's anybody else wishing to check into the 2 a.m. net, come now, please. All right, hearing none... I will go to Joe. Joe, it's uh, good to have you on here. It's been a while. Go ahead and take a turn. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, um, and I agree it's good to be back. Uh, sorry I couldn't come uh, the other time. It was just kind of coincidentally placed in my head, unfortunately. But anyways, I'm glad to be back. Um, so I guess a lot uh, has happened since... Um, my last check-in, uh, I knew one of the times when uh, I was going to call in, I was actually driving my friend's old uh, 80 Dodge D-150 truck with a uh, four on the floor, which was a blast. Um, and, uh, well, that was kind of fun to learn how to drive at a time. I had never driven a full stick before. I typically just drive a semi-automatic or normal automatic. Um, but, uh, let's see. I guess, well, since I'm looking at it now, I guess I'll mention it. This is kind of related to the basics of kind of what we talk about. Um, I found a, uh, like a 90s, probably like earlier, mid-90s IBM uh, CRT monitor on the side of the road. Uh, I saw it on Facebook for like a curb alert type of thing. So I went over and checked it out, and it was an IBM, so it just instantly went into the car. Um, and it's, I'm using it right now. Uh, I just have it connected to my computer for fun. Um, and it's, uh, I guess it's kind of fun to show my friends. They all have, like, really fancy computer monitors. Anyways, uh, I guess that's all on the top of my head, or off the top of my head right now, so I'll turn it back to you. All right, thank you, Joe. That's uh, pretty interesting. A, uh, a four-speed Dodge truck. I have only ever driven one Dodge truck in my life, and that was a, a three on the tree <laughs> with unsynchronized gears. If you want to want to talk about something that's interesting to drive, holy cow, that thing! Uh, and it it had a very uh, uh, low, uh, narrow uh, power bandwidth on the engine, so. If you weren't really good at driving it, by the time you got yourself in second gear, you had to shift back down to first <laughs> to get going again. Uh, that was a, uh, a pretty interesting thing. I, I believe the owner of that truck is the owner of Wolski's uh, downtown Milwaukee. I never met the guy. And uh, he was trying to sell it through a, a guy that I worked for. And I did a bunch of work on that. I, I rewired it. Uh, somebody had welded the, uh, the brake drum on the left rear, and the brakes were out in the back. <laughs> that thing was an absolute blast to drive. Very, very uh, uh, sketchy driving it. And fine business on the uh, on the 90s monitor. Um, the uh, only IBM monitor I have is a 80s monitor. It, it's uh, very very late 80s, probably. It's the original IBM VGA monitor, and it is in dire need of service, but uh, I guess it's been a while since I used it. It probably doesn't even work any <laughs> anymore, but, but find business on finding that. Uh, CRT monitors are, are getting hard to get, and you know if you buy them online, you can spend an awful lot of money to end up with a, a pretty mediocre one. 
And with that, uh, we're at the bottom of the list. Let's see if we have any more check-ins for the 2 a.m. net. Come now, please. All right, hearing none, it's just the three of us. I will uh, mention one more thing here that happened today. I was uh, completely unaware of it. I'm only hearing about it second or third hand here. But a, a plane crashed in a residential area uh, a mile to the south of me here. Uh, I guess that was a pretty pretty uh, big thing going on today. I, like I say, I, I don't know anything about it. I was uh, hopefully sleeping when it happened, and, and that's, uh, <laughs> so that's all I know. Uh, I guess also I'll say that uh, uh, not much has changed for me in the last month. Still waiting to get my piano that I ordered in March. I have not contacted the place that I ordered it from. I kind of am putting that off, so I, I should do that one of these days. Uh, but I've been practicing my finger exercises on my plasticky keyboard anyway, and I'm on hand in uh, number 23 right now. Uh, but that's, uh, I guess, probably not interesting if you don't know what that is. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Dave, WB9BWP from KC9UDX. I won't mention his name even though I'm sure he's passed long ago. 
he could never get to work on time. So he used to purposely set the time clock uh, to give himself a better chance. Of course, he could still always be late, even with the, the change time clock. Um, and they knew he did it, uh, and they used to joke about uh, the fact that we were on a different time standard uh, at the place. But uh, the, uh, the other thing about uh, that, in an effort to get everybody to be on time, that was your bonus money for every week. When I started there, it was $2 a week. For every week you were there on time every day, you got $2. So my first full year there, I think I got like, you know, somewhere in the 80s, like $84 or $86, something like that. They then raised it to $3 a week. And so every week you were there on time, every day you got $3. My last full year there, I got $12. This is WB9, BWP. All right, thank you, Dave. And I'll tell you what, that's not a bad idea. Uh, I wish more places would do that. The place I work at now, you just about get fired if you're late twice. Uh, in fact, I think if you're late three times, you do get fired. I'm, I'm not exactly sure about that. I try to... Well, I have, I have not accrued any such demerit points in the almost six years I've been there. I tried very hard to... Uh, to not be late, but I'm, it's something pretty severe like that. Um, when I uh, tell people, you know, in other places uh, what our attendance policy is like, it's it's so severe that people think I'm lying about it. And it's just, it's not, uh, you know, it absolutely is the way it is. Um, and it's it's our, our union uh, bargains for this. They're just not very good at uh, <laughs> not very good at it up until this point. Hopefully that uh, that changes here in the future. But that uh, that two dollars a week bonus, you know, I don't, I'm not sure how that would translate in today's money, but that's probably enough to encourage people to be on time without any other kind of severe consequences. Probably work really well. And you mentioned the fabric band on the door. I can relate to that 100%. I have a vehicle that is like that. My uh, YJ Wrangler, I, I don't know what the new Jeeps are like, but I'm assuming they don't still do this, but that's exactly how that is. If that band slips off, which it's designed to slip off so that you can lift the doors off, if that slips off and you open the door, the door just goes flying into the fender or the antenna or whatever's in the way. <laughs> so I, I can uh, relate to that 100%. In fact, when I put the soft doors on, there's, there's no fabric band on those, so the you know, if you don't hold the door, it just flaps all the way open. <laughs> anyway, uh, next we'll go to Joe. Joe, go ahead and take a turn from KC9UDX. All right, thanks. Uh, I have a pretty simple kind of a funny story about that uh, international scout there with how the door would fly way open. <laughs> um, and I, I have a question for uh, Matt here. Do you or, and you may have said this, but I, I must not have heard it if you did or whatever. Um, do you remember at all uh, when this one Dodge truck may have been from? Um, I guess it's not super important that it's kind of one thing. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, that's kind of the opposite, that one Dodge truck that you were talking about. And then my friend's truck works here is like a meat gear or whatever. It's low, um, and it's just kind of a mess to drive, and you, you get in, you're, you're in first, and you have to just have to sink it into second, otherwise it'll be jolting around, there's no tomorrow, <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, uh, oh, I guess um, uh, robotics has started back up throughout uh, the school, and now I'm actually taking a C++ uh, programming class, uh, which has been pretty fun. And I've learned a lot from it. I do nothing about actual, like, modern coding before the class. Uh, and I think the C++ is a good start. 
and definitely a good place to kind of learn since I know that it's used in quite a few applications. Um, so that's been pretty fun. Uh, just build stuff and program it to do whatever the uh, document wants you to do or wants it to do. Um, and I believe we talked about this last year, how like robotics has started up and whatever, all that stuff. Um, but you know, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty fun to learn about people plus and whatnot. Um, and uh, I just with that back to Joel. All right, thank you, Joel. That uh, that Dodge pickup was from 1947. Uh, I can't remember what it had painted on the side of it. There's something I've seen painted on the side of it, and it had been painted like that for years and years and years, uh, decades. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could remember what it was. I I try and say it cleanly because it was it was kind of funny. Whatever it was, now I, I'll probably never remember that. This was a this was a long time ago now. <laughs> that that truck also had had a low first gear. What that's called is that's called a granny gear. Uh, and that truck you actually needed it. The uh, the engine just didn't have that much guts, and so you really needed that granny gear to get going. And and like I say, it took so long to get into second gear. You usually ran out of ran out of torque before you got into. By the time you got into second gear, you had to shift back down again. That. Uh, I'll never forget that. My my Jeep also has a, a granny gear and first like that. I I don't have to use it. I do use it just to save wear on the clutch because I've got a really uh, screwy gear ratio. But uh, I think I've mentioned this in the past, and of course if you've seen my YouTube video, you know that I wrecked the rear axle, so that gear ratio is kind of irrelevant now, and, and uh, uh, hopefully I get to the point where I have a proper gear ratio and I'm not using first gear at all anymore so uh, fine business on the uh, robotics <coughs> excuse me the C++ I have a, a very uh, strong bias against C++ I, I will say though I, I think that's good that you're learning it uh, I think of it as a necessary evil because you can't just about can't get by in the world today programming without knowing C++, but I think C++ as a language is just absolutely horrible. It is not how computers should be, in my opinion. Uh, there is a myriad of other programming languages out there, and to me, in this day and age, uh, it should be fairly easy to pick one that suits you well and, and port the code that you need to port into, you, into that language for yourself. I, I guess I have a very different opinion on that anyway because I never liked using other people's code, other people's libraries and things. I always wrote all my own software uh, on every level, which you know, I never wrote operating system stuff, but uh, interfaces to the operating system and everything else, I always wrote all my own stuff, which I don't do too much of that anymore. But uh, it's good to learn that stuff, especially especially in this day and age. We are at the bottom of the list. Let's see if we have any more check-ins for the 2 a.m. net come now, please. Uh, good evening, Matt. Good evening, JCC. All right, and there we have Frank recognizing W9JCC. Do we have anybody else? All right, hearing none. Uh, before I turn it over to you, Frank, I will uh, repeat what I said at the beginning of the net. Uh, my work schedule has been shifted up 15 minutes, so we're losing 15 minutes at the end of the net. Uh, that's unfortunately the most practical thing for me to do at this point. So uh, I have to pretty much have to be on the road at 9 o'clock, so uh, when it gets to be 8.45 or so, I'll We'll start closing up here. But anyway, I'll turn it over to you, Frank, W9JCC from KC9UDX. Okay, uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, KC9UDX and the net uh, W9JCC. Yeah, I got down here just when you were turning it over to Dave, so I heard all of Dave's uh, transmission there. And uh, you mentioned doctor appointments. Uh, I, I found that all uh, hearing <laughs> physical stakes four to six months in advance to get them uh, when you want them. And, uh, 
Frank, and we're not in a hurry yet. <laughs> we got a we got a little ways to go, so it's not a not a problem. I will check though if we have any more check-ins here. Do we have anybody else come now, please? All right, I think that's just going to be the four of us then, but that's fine. I uh, I guess one other thing I was going to say here. Uh, we were talking about Dodge pickups, and I. I think I've only been in a one one other Dodge pickup in my life besides that 47 that I that I worked on and had to drive for a while. Uh, that was a uh, co-worker. Oh, this was well over 20 years ago now. It was uh, uh, late 80s or early 90s Dodge pickup. I don't know anything about it other than I will never forget just getting in that thing and the way the the way the interior was positioned and the way the seat was and the way the hood was, uh, sitting in the seat in that truck made that hood look like it was absolutely huge, uh, just the way the perspective was. And that's all I can say about, <laughs> about Dodge pickups, other than the, the transmission that I put in my Jeep was supposed to be in a, in a Dodge with the uh, Cummins diesel. Um, but it was never never installed that way. I, I bought it as a crate transmission with some upgrades uh, a very long time ago now. And the, the reason I did that was because there's the, the uh, torque ratings on that transmission greatly exceed the, the torque uh, capability of my engine so that uh, I have no chance whatsoever of ever damaging that transmission, hopefully. <laughs> and with that, we'll go back to the top, <coughs> excuse me, the top of the list. Dave WB9 BWP from KC9 UDX.
word in Burlington. So anybody wants to uh, cruise by there, they're certainly looking for volunteers, additional volunteers for that. And food is provided. And as I tell people, that, that's usually a selling feature for ham. We tell them, tell them they're going to get free food. And they're like, you know, where do I sign? But anyway, um, we did a few years in the Boy Scout office on 84th Street, which is Caesar Park, but uh, um, this year we were asked to come out to the campgrounds there, so we'll see how that works. I'm not sure if I'm going to get out there or not. Um, that all depends. I was going to be outside doing antenna work today with uh, a guy that usually comes out to help me, um, but we decided early this morning, yeah, I don't think so. And it seemed to be a good decision. Anyway, I uh, guess that's a good spot, so we'll send it back to that. This is WB9. Oh, and there was the radio timing up. This is WB9, BWP. I was done anyway. Back to All right, thank you, Dave. <coughs> You reminded me, talking about the antenna work, you reminded me of something that happened today. Everybody in my house keeps reminding me, uh, they keep nagging me about it. My HF antenna finally fell down. Uh, I never get to use it anyway. But one of these days, I guess I have to go out there and figure out how to repair it. It needs a, a lot of work. And I've got to come up with a better, a better design for the... Uh, center insulator so that it uh, doesn't come apart. You know, I, I hate to actually go out there and see what happened because for the longest time the, uh, the feed line has been all that's been holding the center of that antenna together. And the uh, it's that window line stuff and I, it, I'm pretty sure it's been tearing like a, like a zipper opening up. So a lot of that's going to have to be replaced. I have, to, uh, I have to figure out a way to make it so that my wife isn't trying to uh, isn't dealing with that antenna every time she has to mow the lawn to it. And, well, it's going to be a lot of a lot of work one of these days. Anyway, next we'll go to Joe. Joe, go ahead and take a turn from KC9UDX. All right, thank you. Uh, you know, I'll start off by saying, wow, 1947, that's pretty old. Um, I, I wasn't expecting it to be that old, but uh, that's pretty cool. Um, and I know exactly what you mean about the both looking desolate rent truck when I was driving it. That that hood was big, <laughs> or at least looked big. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. Oh, uh, I figured out that um, my machining teacher actually has a hand license, a ham license. Um, which was, I guess, issued in 2018. He's only like five years older than me, so I think that that's pretty cool. Uh, um, and uh, so maybe that means that I should get one. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, oh, okay, you were talking about uh, lawn mowing. Well, you know, you mentioned it uh, a little bit. I totally forgot about this. I fixed up our, like, 1980s thing Toro lawnmower, the engine completely seized on the last mow last year. Um, totally dead. I thought that it was going to go to the scrap yard, but uh, nope. I got to work with it. Um, worked up how to unseize an engine, and it runs so good right now. Um, it, it starts right up first of all. Uh, just eats oil uh, pretty hard, which yeah. I guess I mean, it's 30 something years old. Uh, but, anyways, I found also on Curb an MTD lawnmower from like the late 60s or early 70s that uh, came home with me earlier in September, early September. Um, I spent probably two hours on it and it went from uh, dead to working really clean and new. Uh, it cuts the lawn just fine. It's all I've been using. Uh, once we spent early September, a uh, little three horse brake and scratch is down there. Um, super easy to work on engine. Uh, I'm sure that you can probably picture it if you think about an, uh, like a late 60s or early 70s brake. Uh, 
Um, they all kind of have a distinct style to them. Uh, it is a rotary mower with the thing going around at the bottom. Uh, not the other kind, but it's, I guess, mainly it's an older mower. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'll, uh, with that, I guess I'll turn the net back to you. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you, Joe. And I guess I'm not surprised at all that that motor that you run seized burns a lot of oil. Uh, the seized engines that you free up tend to <laughs> tend to do that. Uh, usually the rings get pretty damaged when uh, when you when the motor uh, becomes seized in the first place. And uh, fine business on all that. Otherwise, that's <coughs> that's pretty good that you're doing that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I don't appreciate our modern society and our way of buying throwaway things. I wish, in a lot of ways, we'd go back to things that you know last a long time and, and you can repair them and, and whatever. But I don't know, that, that could be a good thing or a bad thing, and, and we'll see what happens here. And next we'll go to Frank W9JCC from KC9UDX. Okay, thanks, Matt. KC9UDX in the uh, net W9JCC. And, uh, yeah, good to hear Joe in there again. And, uh, sounds like Joe's getting pretty handy there with, uh, the things he's repairing. It reminds me of my grandson. He, uh, he's up in college now, but, uh, this past summer, he picked up, uh, two Broncos. And, uh, one's a mid 70s and the other one is a mid 80s. And he's in the process of restoring both of them. And I think his dad's got, uh, he's helping with one of them. And, um, they are a pretty impressive uh, machine. I, uh, I loaned them a, a short step ladder so they could work, <laughs> work under the hood because, uh, in, the, in the hood area because it, the thing is so, so bob on high, you can't uh, get in there from, you know, standing, uh, on the ground. But, uh, I don't realize how big they are until you get real close to them. And, uh, yeah, the TS-2000, I think you might be running there, Dave, because, uh, I have one here, and it, it, it has the no heads-up timeout, so it doesn't let you know when you have timeout, and I've been caught on that a few times talking to myself. And, uh, yeah, it's just a great thing, and it's a great thing that they have that kind of stuff Frank, I will keep that in mind. I may have to take you up on that. Um, we'll see how it goes. It, it could be a long while before I ever get around to doing anything with it, but uh, if I get to that point, I'll have to, like I say, I'll have to keep that in mind. And anyway, we are at the uh, bottom of the list, but we're running out of time here, so I, I uh, don't think I should even la ask if we have any last-minute check-ins. Uh, actually, I will never know. Anybody wants to check in at the last minute, come now, please. All right, hearing none, we'll go back to the top of the list. And uh, we're not out of time, so go ahead and, and take your time, but this is the 7-3 round. Dave WB9BWP from KC9UDX.
that yeah, I didn't mention before too, I was going to say uh, for Joe and his uh, C++ thing, I'm kind of like uh, Matt there, I don't particularly, I'm not impressed with it, I don't like it that much, and I, I know it kind of, but uh, you know, don't expect me to do anything really good with it, but yeah, it's, but, but knowing it is certainly going to help depending on what kind of job you're going to get. And, um, looking here at the notes, yeah, it's right, it's the, the TS-2000 there. I, I haven't turned the timer off, I, I leave it on there just because, and, um, yeah, they give you no warning, it's just gone, and it's like, in fact, for a long time, it was like, something wrong with, what's wrong with the radio, why does it keep cutting out, and that's just because they don't shut up. Anyway. 73 to everyone that is here, and if there's anybody out there listening, and uh, with that, this is WP9, BWP. All right, thank you, Dave. And uh, <coughs> talking about these uh, Kenwood radios that don't tell you when they time out made me think of a uh, Chinese radio that I've got. It's not a Chinese brand. It's some company down south, and I don't remember what it is. I'll have to dig this thing up, uh, but it, it talks, and it's got this really obnoxious, whiny uh, Chinese voice, <laughs> and I can just imagine, I don't know that it has a time out timer on it, I guess I haven't used it enough, but I can just imagine this thing whining about how it's timing out. <laughs> it, uh, I'll have to uh, dig that up anyway, I'll have to show it to my wife, because she, she's been complaining about how my phone does this recently, it, it reads text messages and things that I get, and it's got a real whiny voice, and the, I guess that radio is very similar, so thank you for reminding me of that. Anyway, uh, next we'll go to Joe. Joe, it's your turn on the 7-3 round. All right, thanks. Uh, and I actually do um, think that C++ is kind of, like, repetitive and long and kind of confusing. Um and not the most efficient, I think, that I've seen. Um, so, yeah, I kind of agree with you guys on that. Um, but, uh, uh, let's see, anyways. Oh, yeah, I have been having pretty good luck um, on the street. <laughs> uh, lawnmower and an IBM uh, VGA monitor. Um, and my only worry about it is uh, I gotta get space. <laughs> um, otherwise, I'm gonna start looking like a hoarder. Uh, uh, which maybe there's some truth to that, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, anyways, uh, I guess 7 3 3 1. Uh, Matt is done here. Um, and hopefully, I can make it one too. Thanks. Alright, thank you, Joe. And uh, next, we'll go to Frank. W9JCC 7 3 round from KC9UDX. Okay, uh, KC9UDX and uh, W9JCC. Uh, I'm not too much more to add except uh, 73s to everybody. Everybody uh, have a good uh, rest of the week. And uh, <coughs> Matt, we'll turn it back to Matt, uh, W9JCC. All right, thank you, Frank. And I will say this concludes the 2 a.m. net. Feel free to rag chew on this frequency after my transmission. We will meet again on... Oh, I'm getting lax on my calendar here. The 9th of November. And uh, I guess I'll say thank you guys for being here. It, uh, uh, it really helps having people here. I mean, I, I, I guess I'm uh, wrong for words here today. I've been obviously low on sleep like always, but uh, I, I do appreciate you guys being here. Anyway, until next month, this is KC9UDX 7-3 and good night.